From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Friends, you know if you watch this program all the time, Jack says nothing unless he can back it up with the Bible. And today, I think you're going to absolutely agree that the Bible is amazing. It's God's Word, and certainly we're going to see some things that Jack's going to give to us today that ties in everything that's going on in the world. First of all, emerging world fear and inflation is one of the global headlines we'll deal with. And Ahmadinejad says, Arab world will usher in new Middle East without Zionists. In other words, without the Jews. And then the Chinese premier met with the Russian president to strengthen those ties. And we're going to see how all of that fits together with what God says would happen for our day. But friends, before we get into that, I had somebody say to me this week, oh, I love Jack's humor. It's wonderful the way he lightens the load before you get started in the program. And you know, Jack, a lot of people have said that about your humor. It's, it is great. I've enjoyed it so much oh, myself. Oh, I've always loved to have fun. You know that. And I heard about a preacher, and there are a lot of preachers like this, who always wanted to get a discount wherever he went. And that is partly me. And so he went into this hardware store and he said, you give ministers discounts here? He said, I like to have about 20% off the price. He said, you know, I'm a poor preacher. And the guy looked at him and says, I know, I heard you last Sunday. Oh, <laughs> oh I don't want that to happen to me, Rexel. And by the way, today I'm going to go a little slower because this is deep. Wow, this is deep. But it is wonderful, it's Jack. Yes, it is teaching. In fact, uh, not long ago, the Lord awakened Jack in the middle of the night, and he w he got up and went right into his study, and he said, Whoa, the Lord has just spoken to my heart, Rexella, and revealed to my mind something that I never really thought about. It had to do with the book of Daniel. Right, Jack? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bring to one's remembrance that which they have learned. I have memorized 15,000 Bible verses by subject from Genesis to Revelation chronologically. And it is amazing what the Lord does. It was February 1st at 5.15 in the morning I awakened and there was. And the Spirit of God said, you've done the book of Daniel verse by verse. Yes. But have you ever thought about this? You've been preaching that there's seven signs and nothing could happen as far as Christ's return until these seven were in vogue. And ladies and gentlemen, 1879 years passed before this could happen, the return of Christ. So when you say, oh, we've always heard of wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, how could those be signs? They tie in with two of the greatest signs in history. But we're going to tell you what it's all about today and slowly. Oh, Jack, I'm looking forward to hearing every word you have to say. But first of all, I'd like for him to enumerate something for us. Now, I've been hearing this, but it was so good to refresh my own mind with what he's going to tell us right now. Seven signs, seven signs had to happen before the Lord says, I'll return. Seven signs. Jack, what are they? Well, we begin with Matthew 24, 36, where Jesus said, you will not know the day and the hour. So many of you say, well, nobody can know then that it's near. You've taken it out of context. Look at verse 33. He said, you will know when it's near. I command you to know when it's near. That's the Greek. 
How do we know? When you shall see all these signs of Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21, happening simultaneously in connection with the two important ones, and there are five more to follow, the two most important ones, and that's Israel becoming a nation. The fig tree blossoms, Matthew 24, 32, and the fig tree is Israel, and that's Joel 1, 7, Hosea 9, 10. So they had to become a nation, 1948, and the Jews, when they become a nation, will capture Jerusalem, Luke 21, 24. It's happened in your day and mine. Then there had to be a European Union because when trouble begins in the Middle East, it's this group that tries to make the peace, and we'll be dealing with that. And they also give a mark because of the economic pressures of the world. And we'll be seeing that. So there are four things. The fifth one is a powerful Russia, a powerful China, and an Iran who hates the Jews and wants to wipe them off the face of the map. Why? Why a Russia and a China? Because Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh, Ezekiel 38, verses 1 and 2, fight the war of the latter years and the latter days, verses 8 and 16. And that war is fought over Jerusalem. 18 times in Ezekiel 38 and 39, they come against the Jew in their own land, Israel. And we're going to deal with those seven now. But what happened was, I've known these, and I've preached them. You heard me. But the Holy Spirit said, look in the book of Daniel 12, 4. Daniel was to be a sealed book until the time that Christ was to return. Nobody would understand it. You can't get books on Daniel before the 20th century. Martin Luther wrote two in his day, but they were never published. We were not able or would not be able to understand Daniel until it's that hour. And the Holy Spirit said, look in Daniel for the seven signs. They're there. Woo. I'll tell you, if I ever believed that the coming of Christ is right at the door, it's now, ladies and gentlemen. Listen carefully. Jack, you know, it just amazes me that our God, before any of these things would happen, or in fact, even before the nations existed, he said, they will exist, they will exist, and all this is going to happen. That's how wonderful our Lord is. He's well, pro provided the information for the Holy for Spirit us. was working in their hearts, and holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Second Peter 1.21. Love it, Jack. I love it. Well, uh, he mentioned the European Union. We're going to get to Israel in just a moment, but let's see something about the European Union, if you will. Our president has amazed me as how he has entered into the European Union. How important is our president to the European Union? Will you please take a look at this uh, statement? Barack Obama has become the de facto president of the European Union, said Jean Quadrimir in his blog in France's Liberation. The newly elected President Van Rompuy has little to say as Obama takes control. As a result, Barack Obama has concluded that only the big European states have the clout to do anything. So he's begun dealing with a select clique, Britain, France, and Germany. Each month, Obama has a video conference with the leaders of these three countries to discuss areas of joint concern, such as Afghanistan, the Middle East, and the financial crisis as well. So it's up to European leaders to make sure that transatlantic diplomacy is an effective foreign policy tool. I can't believe that our president has entered so very, very much into what the European Union thinks. The three largest countries there meet with him video-wise every single month, Jack. It's quite important. And ladies and gentlemen, where is the European Union in the book of Daniel chapter 2? This is the nation called Babylon, a world empire, the third one in history. Already we find that Assyria is passé, and that's Genesis 2.14, as well as Egypt being passé at that time, Genesis 12.10. But now we're at that third world empire, Daniel 1.1, 1, 1, and the leader is Nebuchadnezzar. And one night he has a dream, and he can't figure out what it all meant. And he called in his 
magicians, astrologers, soothsayers, and said, tell me what my dream was or I'll have you killed. And they couldn't. And they said, but have mercy. We know a young Jewish lad by the name of Daniel. He spends much time in prayer to his God, Yahweh. Let us bring him to you. So he came in. And he said, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, I've been praying about this. And I'm shocked. Why? Daniel 2.28. Because God has chosen you, the leader of Babylon, to know what shall happen in the latter days. And then he begins to explain all the kingdoms that are coming. He said, while you are Babylon now, the head on this image of gold that you dreamt about had also two arms of silver. And they are the Medes and the Persians who overtake you. And then there was the stomach of brass as well as the thighs. And that's Greece who will overtake the Medes and the Persians. And then there are the two legs of iron, Rome. And Rome at one time was in two places, Constantinople and the city of Rome. And they'll overtake the Greeks. But right at the end will be ten toes of iron mixed with clay. And it'll be amalgamation. And that is history from this point on. For there will only be seven world empires in history. And that seventh one is revived Rome. The European Union. We've lived to see it, Rex. Oh, how exciting, Jack. And I'm going to go on with thinking and focusing on the European Union. Would you do that with me, please, as we look at these headlines? Hostile Europe. Now, they're talking about the bashing of Israel there in Europe. Something else about the European Union emerging, world fear, inflation. This is not just in the United States, friends. It is worldwide. And again, first effects of austerity shake Europe. My, oh, my, they are shaking over there. Europe's crisis widens. And once again, the EU bailout plans fail to provide a calm. Everyone is shaking and they're saying, what's going to happen? The European Union's economic system is weaker than ever. And then fears of domino effect pervade Europe. Now, the loss of confidence extends from Ireland to Spain to Portugal and all over the European Union. As well as the world. Yes. yes. Did you know something there? My articles that I just gave you and the headlines that I just gave you deal an awful lot with the economy. They're so frightened, the domino effect as to what's happening over there. Now, Jack, uh, is that found in the book of Daniel oh, also? Oh, Rexella, all of you in the past have heard about the mark of the beast, the mark of Antichrist, 666. Now, it all starts in the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 31, and chapter 12, verse 11, he speaks about the abomination of desolation. What's that all about? There was a man by the name of Antiochus Epiphanes, and he commanded many troops, and he went down to Jerusalem to kill as many Jews as possible. He hated them. And one day he went so far as to desecrate their holy temple. He actually made these Jews to begin worshiping Zeus instead of Yahweh. And because the Jews and Muslims are against pork of any kind, he really wanted to offend them, so he put a sow right on the uh, altar of the holy temple. Mm. And because he did so, it became an abomination that made God's holy temple desolate, wasted. Now, that happened on December 16, 167 B.C., it is now 200 years later, and Christ is 33 years of age, and he's preaching. Two centuries passed. And he said, when you see what Daniel the prophet spoke about the abomination of desolation, standing where it ought not, flee! It's the tribulation hour. Now, he wasn't talking about what Antiochus Epiphany did. He said it's going to be something like it. He says, this is future. What it will happen soon. The Bible teaches that they're going to have a war over Jerusalem, Joel 3, verse 2, and 
there's going to come this one out of the EU who will become the dictator of the New World Order, Revelation 13, 1, and there will arise a false prophet with him in verse 11. And he will make an image of the beast, an image, a replica of the Antichrist, and he will set it in the holy temple, the abomination of desolation mentioned by Jesus in Matthew 24, 15. It's there in Mark 13, verse 14. But listen, Rick Sella, the same false prophet, because the economy of the world is flattened, goes to a new system, a mark. It's a microchip, and the Bilderbergs working for this have said we were going to microchip everyone in the world. Where is that? But this false prophet does in connection with the abomination of desolation, when they destroy the temple and make it desolate through their abominations and he sticks that image of the Antichrist there on the altar. Revelation 13, verse 16, it causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or forehead that no man might buy or sell, save he that the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that understanding count the number of the beast, the Antichrist. It's a number of a man, it is number 603 score and 6, 666, the new system. All because of the European Union, the Antichrist and the false prophet. Whew. Daniel. Oh, Jack, it's really exciting to hear what God has said would happen in the last days, just before the coming of the Lord. And we're going to talk more about the coming of the Lord in just a moment and how it applies to you. We need to be ready, don't we? Oh, my, oh, my, I can't tell you how quickly our time goes with you, but we want to get into what Jack said right up front on the program. That one thing had to happen of the seven immediately or of the others could not fall in line, and that is that Israel, the Jews, had to become a nation and take possession of Jerusalem. Here we see it, the Palestinian post state of Israel is born. And of course, that was in 1948. What happened in, yes, what happened in 1967? Well, there you see, they possessed Jerusalem. That is the Defense Minister Moshe Dayan. And again, you see the Six Day War, 1967. They took Jerusalem. The EU pushes Mideast talks and says no alternative to negotiated deal. In other words, we are going to take Jerusalem. The EU ministers Jerusalem to be joint capital of Israel and the Palestinian state. And Jerusalem cannot be capital of state called Israel. Well, why did the Jews have to have a nation called Israel and have to control Jerusalem? before the coming of the Lord. The Bible said they would. Why, Jack? Because everything is about Israel and Jerusalem just before Christ returns. We have in Ezekiel 38 and 39, a nation called Russia, Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh. And Rosh is received in Greek and Russia in English. And the war of the latter years and the latter days is fought, verses 8 and 16. And where do they march? The Middle East. Israel, 18 times, Ezekiel 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice, and 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, and 29. No doubt about it. They could not attack Israel. Why, there was no Israel from 70 AD when Titus drove them out of their land until they came back in 1948, a period of 1,879 years. Nineteen years later, in 67, the Six-Day War, they took Jerusalem. They were not in control of Jerusalem for 1,897 years. So it was all for our time. However, there's a second invasion as China comes down. And now the ragtag army left over from the Battle of uh, Russia in the Middle East. And they were defeated in Ezekiel 39, verses 1, 2, 12, and 13 has China leading the way for the great war. And this is Revelation chapter 9, verses 14 to 18. This is the greatest battle in history, not when Russia makes the move, but when China makes the move. And united with Russia is a place called 
Persia, Ezekiel 38, 5. But Persia changed its name in 1932 to Iran. So all this hatred being spewed out by Ahmadinejad right now is the word of God. Where do you find it in Daniel? Daniel chapter 10. Daniel's prayer doesn't get through for 21 days and suddenly Michael comes to help Gabriel and he says, the prince, the demonic being, Ephesians 2, 2, Ephesians 6, 12, that control the prince of Persia wouldn't let me through, but we've defeated him and we are here. As you read verse 14 of Daniel 10, this prince of Persia is again controlled by this demonic prince, this demonic being, when it comes to the future of Israel. It's right there. And that is what's going on right now as Ahmadinejad is being controlled and says we're going to wipe them off the face of the earth. But where does it say Russia and China in Daniel? Chapter 11, verses 40 to 45. It mentions the king of the north coming down. That's the title of Russian, Ezekiel 38 verses 15 and 16, and chapter 39, verses 2 and 3. And then it talks about the East and North combining, and that's the Shanghai Cooperation Treaty. It's all made, and that is when they come from the East. So there you have it, the King of the North, the King of the East, battling against the King of the West, the European Union. You see, the European Union is going to make peace, and that's how the Antichrist comes to power. He comes in peaceably, Daniel 11, 21. He enters in peaceably, Daniel 11, 24. He makes a seven-year contract with Israel and the nations. There you have Israel in Jerusalem. And that is a period of peace for only 42 months. Then Russia and all these nations make the move. There's an Arab Federation as well. But let me say one more thing. Oh, Rex, all of this is wonderful. This is beautiful. It says... Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, Israel, and thy holy city, Jerusalem. No doubt about it. And when we find a week there, it is one Shabuah in Hebrew and one Heptad in Greek. And that means that a week, a Shabuah, a Heptad, is seven years. And so there's 70 times seven years coming, 490. But it's divided into three parts. The first part is when they're allowed to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls. And that took seven weeks, seven Shavuos, 49 years. Now remember, there are 490 here. And the second thing is that Messiah, from that hour on, will arrive in Jerusalem to die after another 434 years. And he came and died right on the day on Calvary's cross. Oh, and now we have 483 years passed. There's only one seven-year period left, and that's the great tribulation hour when it's the time of Jacob's trouble, and Jacob is Israel, Jeremiah 30, verse 7. So that's why there had to be an Israel, and they had to be in control of Jerusalem, because everything centers around it. You know, Prince, I have so many headlines to back up everything that he just said from the book of Daniel. In our headlines today, in fact, the Chinese premier just went to Moscow and met with the Russian president vowing that they would strengthen their ties. Remember he talked about that? Also, the Arab world would come with them against Israel. And, and Ahmadinejad spoke for the Arab world. He said, we'll usher in a new Middle East without the Jews. So there you see that confederacy coming against Israel. It's all in the headlines, but God said it would happen. Friends, you know what this all points to is the coming of the Lord. I asked someone this morning, if the Lord came now, would you be ready? And she didn't know. I was so glad I could point her to the Lord. You can know that you're ready for the coming of the Lord. Oh, Jack, show everyone how we can be ready for the coming of the Lord. We're going to continue some of this next week and listen, folks. This tells us these are the last signs. Get ready. We don't have much time left. I'm burdened. Pray this, Jesus, precious Savior, the only Savior. Your coming is right at the door. I see it now. And I'm not ready. Oh, Lord Jesus, save me. You shed that precious holy blood in your body to cleanse me. And today I receive it. 
come into my heart, Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is why we've come into your home, that you would pray that prayer and have Jesus in your heart. If you prayed the prayer, there's my address. Please write to me. First steps in a new direction. I'll get it to you as soon as I hear from you. And our offer of the week is wonderful. It's a new book. We will not be silenced by Dr. Lutzer. And I agree with Dr. David Jeremiah. If I could, I'd put this book into the hands of every Christian in America. Oh, how true. Here's our announcer. Chuck Coleman to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order Dr. Lutzer's powerful book, We Will Not Be Silenced, and the DVD Standing Firm and Speaking Out. Call toll free 24 hours a day, 1 800 JVI 7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send 2495 to Jack Vanapie Ministries. Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send 2495 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada. Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I want to encourage you, please, if there ever an uh, offer that we have that I want you to have, it is this one. Everything we've been talking about today is in here and much, much more. Oh my, I wish we had a little more time with you in your home, but Jack has enlightened us so very, very much, hasn't he today? I want to ask a question. Have you ever tried to run away from God? This is a very good saying. Running from God is futile, but running to God brings forgiveness and peace. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week, oh so very much. And until then, remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very much.